Yes. Our next speaker is Inge Rohr. She's the leader of a project addressing skills and competencies gaps using IA. And she's going to talk about developing skills and curricula using IA. So up to you, Inge. Almost ready. So, 18 months ago, I found myself without a job. Even worse, I didn't have any replacement income. So the urgency to find myself a new job was fairly high. Each morning I would wake up, open up my computer, start looking at job sites like uh, Stepping Stone, Academia, LinkedIn. I was looking at the profiles and starting to, see, to look for those jobs that I would think I could land. As I started doing this, I found that there was a skill mismatch between me and the jobs that were promoted for my profile. So, no worries, I'm a learning expert. I can relearn, reskill myself for those jobs, I thought. Next search. Trying to find the right courses so that I would be qualified for those jobs or at least increase my chances. That was difficult as well because each day more courses are spit out into the internet. So as I was growing more and more anxious and getting more and more frustrated, I was getting a sour face. I don't like having that. So I did what I always do. I started drinking. I was thinking, okay, let's do something fun. Let's take a step back and think about how I would design a solution that would enable me to find jobs easier, to find courses easier. This was enthusiastically writing down sketches, doing stuff. And as luck will have it, a couple of weeks later, I met this ex-colleague of mine. He said, how are you doing? I said, well, oh, fine. Did you find a job? Oh, no. But I did draw up a wonderful sketch. And I told him the ideas that I had. And it turned out, he said, ah, but I just launched a similar project. And we already have an AI expert on it. And we already have a human resources expert on it. But we are lacking a learning expert. You can imagine. <laughs> and I got the job. So now I will tell you about the skills project, the name of that project. The skills project uses artificial intelligence. And it uses specifically natural language processing. Now, Natural language processing is a little bit like human linguistics on speed. I will ask you a simple question. If you think about lips, cozy, hugs, you, what do you think? Love. Love. Indeed. We can, with our human brains, we can immediately distill concepts and the main meaning of simple words. We see the relationships between them. Now, natural language processing does just the same thing, but at a much bigger scale, at a much higher speed. Now, we got this AI engine, and we knew, okay, we we're going to use natural language processing, great, but now we needed to find a field that was niche enough to enable us to really check whether the results from the engine were correct, and at the same time was thriving in innovation, because we need a quickly transforming field. It just so happens in energy, the organization I work for, is specialized in providing courses for the renewable and sustainable energy sector. Niche enough, and quite a bit of innovation. And additionally, working on sustainable energy, for me, for myself, gives me a good feeling as well. So we had our ecology. Good. Now, the only thing we needed to do, 
is to find the next steps towards the results of the skills engine. Step one, finding industry reports. We wanted to make the skills engine a little bit predictive as well for future skills as well as existing skills. So we thought if we analyze industry reports, we might get this prediction right. In the past, we used predictions as well. We turned to industry gurus and we said, oh, Jack Ma, tell us, where is industry going? And he would give an answer, but hardly any industry guru is actually answering based on facts. Now, with natural language processing and looking at industry reports, government reports, white papers, we can distill the core concepts. Remember, it's all about relations, keywords, putting them together. So now we had a good basis to see where an industry was going, because if we compared uh, industry reports from 2016 pointing uh, to solar energy, and then we compared them to industry report, report results from 2019, and we could see wind energy really gaining interest, then we would know skills needed were mostly related to wind energy. Step two, the skills. It's all right to have an idea of where an industry is going, but we also need to have a taxonomy of the skills. As was said this morning, we need jobs, these jobs consist of skills, and these skills consist of learning outcomes that you have acquired to be able to do that skill. So we got a taxonomy of skills. Step three, looking at actual skills of human beings. If you are 40 or 50, year, uh, 50 years old, you have a four-page resume. This hardly makes up for all the skills and competencies you have acquired along the years. But still, this is the basis to get a job, send it to human resources, and those people don't know you either. So they believe what is in this four-pager but they lack the real skills that you might have. And with this engine, we can predict, we can look, of course, to a CV, put it into the machine, and say, these skills exist, but these skills are also existing in your profile. We know this from the correlation of all different massive amounts of CVs. Good. If we have that, we have step four. We can look at the skills gap. And if you have a skills gap, you can look at courses. Because evidently, in a course description, there you can filter out the skills that are addressed in these courses. So now we have a skills gap that we can find, and we can crawl the net for courses, look at the course descriptions, and provide them as a big bag of courses to the learner. Look, if you want this job, Take this cluster of courses. All that needs to be done is now make, break these courses down into little chunks so everybody is happy to learn. Ah! We know this will work. It's difficult. Why is it difficult? Let me ask you to reflect on something. What is learning? We are all experts in learning. We can all have ideas, behavior change, other indicators. But let's face it, if we take all of our common knowledge, it's not going to be as simple to really define learning. Now here's the problem. Um, here's the problem. Let me point you to von Neumann. He was one of the forefathers of AI. Please read. And that's a problem. Because if we can't define what learning really is, we can't build a machine for it. So we need to break it down into little pieces. And if we look at the challenges, there are many, 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 many challenges, but at least 
I want to share three big challenges that we all know about. Granularity. That, well, remember the days where we needed to provide online learning and we said granularity will enable us to update the courses without having to redesign the full course. In this point in time, granularity for the skills agent means cutting courses down into pieces that can be reassembled. Because you can imagine if you have a cluster of courses coming from different institutes and organizations and corporate academies, the chances of there being an overlap are really big. And at the same time, there's a big chance that some of the content for the courses out there also have this massive gap between them. So we need to tackle them out. We do this to a certain point. Okay, let's go back. Another challenge is scaffolding, pedagogical scaffolding. If you have this cluster of courses and you provide it to a learner, each of these bits of pieces of learning have a different pedagogical background. So how are we going to provide a continuity? We have thought about coaches to use them, to guide a person through the courses. Other uh, options are also considered. Any ideas? Glad we share them afterwards. Another big challenge is badges or certification. Again, if it comes, if these personalized learning trajectories come from all these institutions and corporations, in the past it was simple enough. You had one university, that's your degree, even with MOOCs. This is your certification, we can do this. But if you have pieces from a personal learning trajectory coming from all across the board, you need certifications from all of them, including the coaches, including peer-to-peer -peer learning. Maybe blockchain is an option. Personally, I see advantages, but also disadvantages. Join the discussion panel tomorrow at noon. Three minutes <laughs> Okay, so if you have all these challenges, it's clear that we cannot develop or address all of these challenges in, on our own. So what we do is look at uh, off-the-shelf AI educational tools and try them out. Just showing you three. Curated open content from Filtered, what they do is look at open content, their talks, YouTube movies, and they provide it as small learning bits, granularity. Another one is adaptive learning tools. We are now testing ScoutLogic's DevLoop because it can fit different chunks together into like a meaningful learning path. And additionally, you can just plug it into your LMS. Nice. And then wildfire learning. This is actually a tool uh, made by Donald Clark, who's also at this conference. And it provides automated content generation with open questions, first content, open questions, a glossary built in just a couple of hours based on text documents and video transcripts and such as well. So, wrapping up, I mean, if you look at where we are at now, in only 18 months, it's quite, oh, here's a good feeling. Because if you are now, in, if the tool launches with a totally fabulous front end by the end of January 2020, then you can have a look. And you, as an employee, you can just test the tool and find the right job. And additionally, even find the job you want to aim at in the future and get courses to get that job. From an employer's point of view, you can take a group of employees that you have and reskill them for emerging skills that will happen in your field. But it's like Audrey Walter said, you can look for efficiency, which is nice, but this tool, hopefully, I'm hoping for it, will deliver just a little bit of happiness to people. Because just imagine, if your job really fits your skills, if your learning is offered in a personalized way, for me at least, 
it will make me a little bit happier. Meaning, it's nicer to be amongst all the other positive workers as well. So, that is it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. And our next speaker, speaker is Kathy Clemens from uh, Finland, from the University of Vestia. She is a postdoctoral researcher. And her topic is personalized learning uh, in relation to curricula and uh, skill gaps. So it's you, Kathy. That's a tough act to follow. 